Well, greetings from Mojave, California. This is Randa Milliron. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Interorbital Systems. Uh, we are a rocket manufacturing and satellite manufacturing company uh, based um, at the Mojave Air and Space Port. Uh, we have uh, full test facilities at that location uh, for uh, any type of rocket engine that uh, requires testing. And uh, build our engines exclusively in the U.S. We concentrate at, at, uh, at the Mojave location with prototyping and testing of um, our orbital launch vehicle system. Uh, we have a flight location north of Mojave uh, at a uh, privately held um, uh, desert launch facility gives us a great advantage and allows us to do our low altitude test flights. Uh, we are, will be doing most of our operations from uh, an ocean base off the coast of California, at least for the initial four launches, and there will be polar, polar uh, orbits. And we use a uh, canister launch system uh, that uh, we use to transport the rocket to a particular latitude and longitude and then conduct activities. It's basically a, uh, a uh, private mobile spaceport. Uh, the um, uh, newest addition to our, uh, um, our equipment and our operations uh, is the location and the staging area for launch at the Port of Los Angeles. Uh, our main uh, workhorse uh, in all the systems that we, uh, we build is called the Common Propulsion Module. It's called that because it's common to every configuration of the modular rocket systems that we build. It's um, basically a simple sounding rocket. Uh, each CPM, as we call them, ha they each has a an engine a valve section, a fuel tank, an oxidizer tank, a fairing, and a brain. So uh, when we put these together, when we bundle them, uh, and the minimum configuration we can have for an orbital launch vehicle is five, uh, we create um, a quite a powerful uh, rocket unit that can be configured for any mission requirement. Uh, here at the Mojave location, we uh, conduct all our rocket engine testing and manufacturing. Uh, there's a photo of a recent thruster uh, firing. And um, uh, this uh, set up with uh, our, our test sites and right at our right at our manufacturing location is, is uh, is really uh, convenient and uh, productive for us. We uh, are the first U.S. company to use uh, nitric acid, uh, furfil alcohol, and turpentine as our propellants. And uh, we have decided on these because of their high performance and also because it gives us a hypergolic ignition and uh, none of the negatives of uh, toxic uh, hypergols like uh, hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide. And again, I'll reiterate, all our rocket engines are built in the USA. We do not depend on Russian engines for our launches. Uh, this is a uh, uh, photograph of the qualification run of our, our main engine, uh, which is the general purpose rocket engine, 7,500 pounds of thrust. Uh, it's the main engine for the system. As I mentioned, each CPM has, a, has an engine, and that cumulative thrust uh, gives us... Um, exceptional performance. Uh, very smooth running, as you can see, brilliant uh, brilliant uh, plume there. That's about a 24-foot long plume. And uh, uh, smooth, uh, fantastic, instantaneous ignition and, and great performance. Uh, here's a photograph of uh, one of our folks at the top of, of the rocket uh, closing up the payload sections for uh, the first launch of the, uh, the CPM. And uh, we were carrying uh, four payloads on that, uh, as well as um, instrumentation, and uh, we're testing a number of uh, a number of systems with this launch. Uh, there's the takeoff. You can see the uh, classic mock diamonds down the center of the plume. Everything's working fantastically, and that rocket, which is weighs over a half ton, just sprang off the the um, uh, the the launch uh, stool there with uh, with an amazing amount of, uh, of uh, power. It reached one, Mach 1 1.5 uh, within five seconds. And uh, we recovered that rocket and all the payloads and uh, everything was still functioning and intact. Uh, it was a shot from the, uh, 
uh, from the rocket itself. It was low altitude launch, but it proved a number of systems, as I mentioned, and uh, uh, we were very pleased with it. So, um, and, and the payload was in, the we were, payloads we were carrying were international. Those are all going on our orbital launches, which we hope to begin at the end of this year. Um, some uh, fantastic uh, results for all those payload owners and also for us because it was a complete success in terms of the systems that uh, that we tested. Uh, and this vehicle, this uh, CPM times five uh, gives us our Neptune 5 launch vehicle. It's a, it's a dedicated small sat launch vehicle uh, for orbital uh, orbital purposes. We have uh, nearly 100 payloads on board currently, and many of those are made with our uh, TubeSat and CubeSat uh, satellite kit. So we sell a kit and the launch uh, as, a, as our way of uh, giving access to space for people who might not be able to afford it normally. So we are the lowest cost launch vehicle in the world. And um, uh, if you take a look at this configuration, as I mentioned before, the outer four uh, CPMs become the booster. Uh, the second stage is uh, the central uh, CPM. And then there's a kick stage uh, for the satellite uh, deployment unit. And that'll take 24 tube sets or roughly uh, 12 uh, cube sets. Uh, this will evolve eventually to a 36 unit a medium lift rocket that we're going to be using in uh, the Google Lunar X Prize with our team Synergy Moon. And uh, again, another photograph there of the engine firing. Um, we are also working on a lunar landing system uh, for our, our team Synergy Moon called Virus One. We test our guidance system and our software on the on this unit currently, but that will evolve into uh, into the lunar lander that uh, that will eventually go to the moon. Uh, in that contest. Uh, we also have lunar sample return missions planned. We're already selling and uh, pre-selling samples, and that's for uh, private collectors and researchers. Uh, many of the things we do uh, are leading up to manned flight and uh, lunar flight and interplanetary flight. Uh, so we, we build everything from the ground up, uh, starting with the engines and the whole propulsion system, all the tankage, and uh, ending up with the uh, satellites. You can see a tube sat there at the bottom. And um, we have a variety of custom satellites as well. And the satellite kits come with everything you need to make a, a personal satellite. Um, and um, again, we have two form factors and uh, nearly 100 sold. Here's a list of our CubeSats. Uh, many uh, uh, international players in this whole uh, this whole um, array, um, and many different types of um, payloads, including arts payloads, music payloads, pure science payloads, government payloads, military payloads, NASA payloads, many many different uh, types of satellites. The TubeSats in 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 um, in, a, in our world are are by far uh, the most um, most popular because you can you can actually get a um, <clears throat> excuse me an orbital uh, experimental platform for uh, eight thousand dollars that gets you the kit and the launch and as you can see many universities worldwide have taken advantage of this uh, this offer and uh, actually uh, the University of Sydney is one of the uh, payloads that'll be on board. Uh, our first orbital flight and more as you can see they continue with um, uh, uh, more of this this vast array of um, uh, really different different types of um, uh, experimentation different types of performance art it really it covers the whole spectrum so we're, we're really pleased to be part of this and to make uh, make this happen uh, a few of the photographs of, uh, of our, our clients around the world, uh, every age range you can think of from, um, well, there, there are people in, uh, there are 11-year-olds in Brazil build, building our, our satellites. There are, uh, uh, that's all the way up through NASA 
and again, universities like University of Sydney, uh, just a massive, massive uh, outpouring of interest in this whole um, this whole world of um, personal satellite research. So we're really pleased with uh, with uh, the direction uh, that um, you know that the whole launch uh, industry it has. Uh, you know, has uh, has really has really focused upon and the direction in which it's going, which is which is um, you know more numbers of satellites, but tinier. So it's uh, you know more no more in number, smaller in size, and access for everybody. So we're really pleased uh, to be here and present, and um, best wishes to all of you who are either in the small sat world or choosing to enter it.